What's happening everybody, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match review of what was an epic game, to be fair, between Chelsea and Leicester City at Stamford Bridge. A one all draw, but the game was incredibly entertaining and there's loads of talking points which I'm going to get into in this video. But before I do get into today's review, I want to let you guys know that I upload videos on this channel every single day, so why don't you guys subscribe and hit the bell notifications icon and hey why not like the video to help me out so epic scenes at Stamford Bridge today it looks palpable everyone singing Frank Lampard's name the boys come home Frank Lampard senior is watching his son from somewhere in some stand and it's pretty epic the broadcasters are talking it up and it did look like quite the occasion Chelsea obviously have just come off a 2-2 draw and losing on penalties to Liverpool in the Super Cup final but it was an excellent performance out in Istanbul and even though Chelsea did get slapped about 4-0 at Old Trafford there were still positives to take from how they played over there. So how did Chelsea play today? Well I'm going to run you through it all so let's whip up the analysis page. Alright so as you can see in the graphic both formations from both Chelsea and Leicester. They both deployed a 4-3-3 formation. I'm not going to run through the Leicester two players but you can have a look. The main difference from the Chelsea uh, starting formation if you look at how they compared to the game in Istanbul is Mason Mount comes in for Kovacic. He gets the starting play. So everything stays the same. Obviously an interesting talking point for this game was who was going to start in the striker position and it was Olivier Giroud. Um, I kind of felt like that was maybe sensible rather than throwing Tammy straight back in. But anyway, Mason Mount gets the nod and that was a positive sign as you'll hear in a moment. And as for Leicester, the one big absentee is Ben Chilwell and Christian Fuchs comes in. Which at first I thought was a real big positive for Chelsea but Fuchs was good. Leicester are an incredibly good team now and that is a formidable midfield three and you know what a pretty darn decent front three as well. But let's review how the match actually went starting with the first half. So I want to say off the bat Chelsea were electric this first half and it's certainly the beginning majority of it. They came out of the blocks and they did a madness on Leicester. I mean just in the first minute Pedro hits the outside side netting when he should have gone across the keeper to score a goal and that was in the first minute Chelsea came out on top and by the third minute Chelsea have had three immensely positive scoring chances that they haven't converted but they are all over Leicester they're doing great combinational play in the final third and Leicester's midfield can't get a sniff but it didn't take long for this excellent spell of Chelsea pressure to pay off because come off the seventh minute and young Mason Mount the young kid who's been at the club since he was six years old gets his first goal for Chelsea and Chelsea's first Premier League goal this season under Frank Lampard. It's kind of fitting how Lampard's surrogate son Mason Mount scores the first goal of his sort of Chelsea tenure. But to be fair to Mason Mount it is a superb goal. He presses and presses indeed he actually turns over possession sort of has a bit of a collision in the tug and as he's falling he still whips off a superb finish to make it Chelsea 1, Leicester 0. The opening 10 minutes is Chelsea dominance and like I said that what should be an excellent Leicester midfield can't touch Chelsea. It's energetic, it's entertaining, it's fast and it's effective from Frank Lampard's Chelsea. And by the 12th minute a statistic popped up on my screen telling me that Chelsea had 78% possession so yeah they really were slapping Leicester about come about the 20th minute Leicester are having a few spells and starting to settle in the game a bit more and Zuma's starting to do some graft in the 20th minute he does an excellent defensive tackle keeping Leicester out and they're starting to gain confidence a little bit but Chelsea aren't laying up and they continue their really positive offensive play. They do a really good combination in the final third and the ball gets crossed back to Mason Mount which he heads straight into the arms of Schmeichel. A little bit either side and it's 2-0 Chelsea. And maybe they will live to regret these missed chances early doors. 26th minute, Chelsea play some beautiful football. Great combinational play in the final third. Comes up to Giroud who's on the byline who does a wicked little sort of back heel flick that is... It deserves a mention in itself because it was awesome. Goes to Kante, Kante whips in a shot. Um, at, first, uh, f at first I thought he missed it but it takes a deflection and Chelsea win a corner which they can't capitalise on. But 
an excellent passage of play from Chelsea and it's incredibly entertaining football. So by the end of the opening 30 minutes, it's generally been dominated by Chelsea at this point, Leicester have had the odd moments of positive play, usually on the counter, as I would have expected from Leicester. But still, at this point, it's Chelsea's game. A few more minutes pass on, Leicester do carve out a few more chances and they get some set pieces, which is Chelsea's Achilles heel and their strength at a lot of times, certainly the Foxes counter-attacking and set pieces. But again, they haven't really profited of any of these small chances they're getting. In the 37th minute, Jorginho concedes a foul and earns himself a booking, which offers James Madison a really good free kick chance. But fortunately for Chelsea, Leicester do not convert this chance. It was only in the second half, which you're going to hear about in a bit, where James Madison completely set on fire. So the closing minutes of this half kind of really brings a much lower quality of play from both sides, maybe due to the high octane nature of the first half, probably more from Chelsea attacking and Leicester chasing, but it gets a bit scrappy and the quality of football lowers in the dying minutes. So that brings half time, Chelsea won, Leicester nil. On the graphic, I've pulled up the half time statistics for you guys to have a look at. And while you do, I want to run through some player performances. Both the centre backs were good in this half. Christensen's positional play is very good as it has been often of late, but Zuma was very, very good. It's like he has a point to prove after his poor performance away at Old Trafford. I know he was good in Istanbul, but he wants to show some metal in the Premier League, and he did that today. Pulisic was decent. It was a very high-paced game from Chelsea's perspective, but it looked like he was keeping up. Probably not his brightest moments in a Chelsea shirt, not as bright as, say, in pre-season or away in Istanbul, or even fleeting moments in uh, Old Trafford, but... He still managed to have a few good moments and it looks like he's comfortable with the Premier League and combining with his fellow Chelsea teammates. And we know he's a quality finisher and dribbler, etc, etc. As for Pedro, Pedro showed great industry, as he often does. He was really good in this first half. He was great in the final third, uh, combining with his teammates and doing incisive little passes and not conceding possession in a silly way, which he often can do in this half. He was good. Um, and yeah, his running back defending did rather well. But it's a shame for Pedro and other forwards in this half that they did not capitalise off this devastating early pressure. I want to mention Giroud because the game wasn't really built for his strengths. He combines well with either one of the striker or number 10 like he used to do with Eden Hazard. Or maybe like long balls in the box, which Chelsea weren't doing, but he needs a mensch just for that back heel alone. Which brings me on to N'Golo Kante, who is probably the player of the half. Very, very good industry, good interceptions as you'd expect from him, but also moves forward very, very well. Very comfortable in possession. Born again in that right centre mid spot, still makes the interceptions, but he's definitely developed as a player since he shifted positions because he has got the license to intercept everywhere but he's just developed his all-round play shout out for emerson really good performance in the first half runs up and down that left flank really really well um has a good cross on him has a good shot on him doesn't concede possession in a silly way he can do one two vertical one twos very very quickly and, and quite comfortably and is pretty serviceable and decent in defense so yeah he maybe wasn't like lightning in this game but very very good performance and obviously shout out for the goal scorer mason mount scored the goal took it very well great pressure faded maybe a little bit but did very very well generally in this first half right then come off the second half and on the graphic next to me i've put the team that ended the second half the first five minutes starts with nothing particularly decisive both teams are sort of figuring themselves out and figuring each other out of how they're going to play in this half a little bit up and down but five minutes in leicester do come carve out an excellent scoring chance, mainly through James Madison, and from this point onwards, he sets far and has an excellent half. Kepa makes a bit of a rash decision, comes out, and then leaves the goal exposed, but fortunately, Leicester don't capitalise and score. Chelsea settle for a very short period of time, and Giroud up the other end does force a save out of Schmeichel, but nothing too decisive or worrying for the Foxes at this point. So 15 minutes into this second half, it's becoming incredibly obvious at this point that James Madison is seeing far too much of the ball for a Chelsea perspective, and he's really, really grown into the game. In the 61st minute, Frank Lampard makes his first substitution. Olivier Giroud makes way for a Tammy Abraham, who receives a really positive reception from the Chelsea faithful. So a few minutes after that, Chelsea are doing really positive play and by this point 
you know, okay, this, as a Chelsea fan, you'll be frustrated for a lot of reasons, but you have to say as a football fan, this is an incredibly entertaining game. Certainly if you're a neutral or, you know, whatever, a Leicester fan that are happy to see their team grow into the game. But in terms of a contest, it's a really good one. And in the 66th minute, Ndidi scores. Chelsea can see the corner, as per the quarters, meant to be picking up Ndidi, not as tall as him. He gets the jump on him and rifles away the header. From a Leicester perspective, you could say it's no less than they deserve at this point. They've been really, really good in the second half for the most part. And from a Chelsea perspective, really frustrating. Sure, maybe a Leicester goal could have been coming, but it's a set piece and that seems to be a weakness for Frank Lampard's Chelsea and Derby last season. But indeed he made the original mistake that led to the Mount goal in the first half and you can imagine he's pretty happy he equaled things up here. So Frank Lampard plays the cards that he has in the 70th minute and makes two changes. Jorginho comes off for Kovacic and Pulisic comes off for Willian. Willian gets to move into his favoured left wing spot and Kovacic moves into that sort of flexible midfield three but mainly plays on the left hand side. The 73rd minute brings a frightening moment for Chelsea where Christian Fuchs flies down the wing and carves out an immense chance for James Madison who can only fire over. Moments like this is when probably the Leicester fans weren't missing Ben Chilwell too much. Only seconds later though Tammy Abraham goes up the other end, does some really good work to basically allow himself to have a shot but does all the hard work then just fires a shot over the crossbar. 77th minute, Jamie Vardy gets his chance. He'd been really good all game in terms of occupying the right space, making the right runs. He's very patient, Jamie Vardy. He does all the right things, doesn't get frustrated, but he knows his chance will come, and it came. And fortunately for Chelsea, he rifled it really hard with his left foot, but it just bent wide. 83rd minute comes, Mason Mount and Willian stand over a Chelsea free kick. Mason Mount takes it as it's more sort of front of the goal and he just fires it into the Matthew Harding stand. And a bit of painful comedy in the 86th minute, Chelsea win a corner. Mount doesn't take the corner, no. Willian takes the corner, and guess what Willian does? Hits the first man. Where have I seen that before? After a Chelsea attack in the 89th minute, Leicester break down towards the other end, create an awesome chance of Tielemans. They don't convert, but this game you cannot take your eyes off for a minute. It was nervy, it was exciting for some I imagine, but nervy for Chelsea fans and it was just up and down, up and down. 91st minute, Tammy Abraham does really well again to give himself a chance, but blazes over. And then one minute later in stoppage, the Foxes camp out and the Chelsea defensive third and nearly carve out a really big chance to score the winner but fortunately for Chelsea they get the ball away and in the final minute of stoppage time Leicester are coming in with an attack the ball's been passed forward there's advancing runners Kepper comes out of his goal and makes a defensive tackle 40 yards away from his goal epic scenes the full-time whistle comes Chelsea won Leicester City won the heart attacks over Disappointing for Chelsea. I don't know how Leicester should feel about it because maybe they think they could have stolen it as well in the second half, but so much to talk about. So entertaining as a football match, but it's difficult to know how to feel about this one. I've thrown up the full time statistics on the graphic. As you can see, Chelsea had more shots and more shots on target, but generally, if you look at passes in possession, this was a pretty even game. And I. It's one, the, it's one of those perfect examples or opportunities to say it was a game of two halves. But even in the second half and at the end of the first half, it was up, down, up, down. It, this game genuinely could have gone either way at so many points. Notable performers in this half would probably be Kante again, excellent. Emerson sustained his positive period. I think Kurt Zuma was excellent in this half. And if it wasn't for loads of really promising defensive actions from him, Chelsea would have been screwed and lost this game. Other than that, there was a lot of players that faded, I guess from both sides, but obviously for Leicester, the notable performers would have been people like James Madison and maybe Christian Fuchs, because they really perked up. Anyway, that's enough of the analysis screen. So, disappointing for Chelsea, right? Only one point on the board, Frank Lampard's first home game against what's not a top six side. But are they not a top six side? This Leicester side, are incredibly good. Now, I feel like Chelsea should have won this game in terms of quality and what I believe the team should have done as a Chelsea fan. But I've been saying 
Leicester, they were excellent under Brendan Rodgers at the end of last season. They've got an excellent squad. Rodgers is a great coach and they are a threatening team that are more settled than this current Chelsea side. I want to talk about a couple of worrying problems for Chelsea. One would be the set pieces. It was a problem for Frank Lampard at Derby. It looks like it's a problem for Chelsea. Set pieces have seemed to have just curse Chelsea for a while now. So that's an obvious one. That needs to be ironed out with proper defensive coaches. Maybe John Terry needs to leave Aston Villa and join Frank Lampard. But a big one, I think, is fading in second half. Now, I know this probably didn't happen in Istanbul. Obviously, they conceded the early goal to Mane, but they sort of sorted themselves out and got back into the game. But in this game, like Old Trafford, that would probably be the best comparison of what happened to Old Trafford because Chelsea were way better than Man United in that first half at Old Trafford. Um, and, you know, they were, it was frustrating that Kurt Zuma conceded that penalty and Chelsea probably should have scored a couple anyway. But in the second half at Old Trafford, they switched off um, and maybe run out of, you know, gas. And certainly that's what it looked like in this game today. Chelsea looked leggy, the concentration levels have dropped and maybe Frank needs to look at distributing the concentration levels or energy levels, you know, resting out of possession or something like that. Either that or you have to capitalise of this a super high octane early pressure when they could have scored two, three, four goals in the first half. The important thing to know is the positives though. Think about it. Frank Lampard wants to do something at Chelsea. You can see what he's trying to do and it's exciting for the spectator, for the Chelsea fans. That's what the fans inside Stamford Bridge wanted. They wanted to see more of their own playing, which, you know, they are now. They wanted to see some more direct attacking football that's not possession attacking football, and they're getting that. And there needs to be, obviously, the understanding that Frank's gonna need a lot of time uh, and patience to get things going. But Leicester are a really good team. They've got seasoned Premier League players, um, high tier players everywhere. Brendan Rodgers is a good coach, and he's already spent time with that squad so there's probably more positives than negatives in the general context of how Frank Lampard is developing this Chelsea but Chelsea will eventually need to start winning games and get points on the board but you know they haven't like bent over for any other team they got slapped about with counter-attacks and other than that in Istanbul and at Stamford Bridge they showed superb passages of play and showed him really entertaining attacking football at times. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on the game, on player performances, are you feeling positive, negative? Let me know about all of it and you know what, please do like this video. And of course, if you are new, subscribe to this channel because I upload every single day and I do live streams and interact with you guys and it's a hell of fun, so get involved. Also, you can support me on Patreon if you want for $1 a month. And also, follow me on social media, at Football Yannick. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the game. Enjoy the football generally, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby.